What is up my hunting brothers and sisters? Today we're going to do my second video on what it's like being an older guy and saddle hunting in 2022. So those of you who follow along with the channel know that I've been saddle hunting for two full seasons now. And during the season of 2020, my first fall saddle hunting, I did a video on over 50 older guys version of saddle hunting. And so I wanted to do a follow up video to that because that video was very well received. So the reason I want to do this video and did the first one is uh, saddle hunting seems to on the surface feel like a young man's game and it can be quite intimidating to be quite frank like there's so much gear and so many different tactics and you're doing this right and you're doing this wrong and you get online and everybody tells you that how their way is the best way. Well I'm here to take a little bit of the intimidation out in this video. Uh, I'm not going to dive deeply into the actual products uh, that I use. I'm going to do individual uh, videos on that. So stay tuned in uh, upcoming days and couple weeks here. And I'll do individual products where I really go in down the rabbit hole on why I chose the gear that I chose. All that being said, I'm not married to any brands at all. I've received no financial compensation whatsoever on any of the saddle hunting gear that I use. I've paid full retail price for everything not used any industry discounts or any of that. So what I've got here, I'm running because this is what I've found so far for me is the best setup and I really like it. So is saddle hunting a young man's game? Heck no, it's not, not at all. Uh, in the last two years, I would say the first year I set, hunted out of a saddle, probably 50% of the time in 2021 fall deer season, I hunted out of a saddle, I'd say 75 to 80% of the time, maybe even higher than that. I absolutely loved it. I was even hunting out of my saddle in traditional tree stand sets that I had. I like it that much. So let me give you from uh, a seasoned hunter perspective. I'm 52, I'll be 53. I'm in no means old. But again, this is something I think when you look online, you think that this is maybe the 20 something game or the early 30s uh, game. Uh, I've actually found that for me, getting in, getting up a tree and getting set up is very easy. And a lot of that it comes down to selecting quality gear that fits your style and is lightweight. And I can get up a tree if I'm not filming. Filming is a whole different element to it. But if I'm not filming, I can go to any random tree that's relatively straight, relatively not free or is free of uh, most branches. And I can be up there hunting in five to worst case 10 minutes. It's really no big deal. So for me, I actually like it. Um, I just find that it's, I feel more engaged in the actual hunt. So what are the couple big pros uh, of saddle hunting for me? Well, probably the biggest pro for me is the safety aspect of it. If we're being quite blunt, there's a lot of pros to this. Um, when you talk maneuverability, which we will hear in a second, but safety standpoint for me is big. I have been in all my years of hunting been saved two times by a harness in uh, situations. One was in a hunting situation where I had a stand fall out from under me and the other I was hanging a stand and thankfully was wearing a harness when I was doing it. So for me, I take tree stand or hunting at elevation safety very seriously. And what I like about it is I take everything to the tree with me every time. So I am hands on my sticks, my platform, all my gear, my ropes and everything all the time. My stuff is not setting out there for squirrels to chew or for UV to break down and all that. And again, being hands on, if I see a fray in a rope somewhere or something, I know, oh no, I got to address this right away. Where if you hang, even let's say it's a new tree stand set in August and you go out on October 1st, and it was all new gear, you could have had a uh, squirrel chew through a strap or something. Um, there's all kinds of failures that can happen in cables and everything else. So for me, I find it's very safe. I'm always attached, whether it's with the tether or with the linesman rope. Um, could you get hurt? Yes, you can get hurt doing anything. 
So what is, uh, beyond that, what's the, the big thing? And you'll hear a lot of people say this. And uh, maneuverability and concealability, I think, are top notch. Um, now, the tree I'm on right now today for demonstrations is a little smaller than ideal. But I would hunt this tree, no problem. I don't like going into those big 18 to 20 plus inch diameter trees if I don't have to. But uh, somewhere in that... You know, that 12 to 15, 16 inch diameter tree is like a real ideal tree if you can get it. But we know the ideal trees are, are few and far between. But for me, maneuverability is huge. Uh, it doesn't matter whose platform you're on, what brand, doesn't matter what brand of saddle you're on, just the ability to keep this tree between you and the deer. And you're gonna kind of set up different than a tree stand would. Uh, you know, in a tree stand, typically, you want your back to the tree. Uh, for example, if I know that deer are coming from this way and that's a traditional stand, I'm gonna be setting up here like this. In a, in a saddle situation, even though you've got great maneuverability, you're still gonna set up for, in this case, I know that deer are gonna probably be somewhere out in front of me. That's the highest likelihood. So I'm gonna set up for that. But the ability to keep this tree between me and the deer at all times, no matter which way I wanna go, is absolutely huge. And I found that to be an invaluable tool. So let's dive into gear basics here and then we're gonna show some of the shooting possibilities. So, you know, obviously you gotta have a set of sticks. Uh, me personally, I'm, and I do videos on all this stuff later, but I really like the, the Eastern Woods Outdoor sticks. Start out with some hawks, but I really like the, the Eastern Woods Outdoors. I'm running three sticks with aiders, uh, right? I've actually bought four sticks. The fourth one, honestly, I don't need it. I can get with the three sticks and the aiders, I'm getting up to a hunting height of about 16, 17 feet. I could probably push it more if I wanted to, but usually anymore, that 14 to 15 foot range, I find pretty ideal for my setups. You're also gonna need a platform of some sort. Personally, I like the tethered, uh, the tethered Predator platform, the original. I just like it, it's simple, it's clean. There's a lot of great ones out there, whatever. But again, we'll go into the details in another video, but you're gonna have to have a platform. <clears throat> then obviously you're gonna have to have a saddle. Um, you can, there's just a zillion different saddle designs. There's single pa panel saddles. There's uh, the uh, ones that kind of telescope outward, they're pleated. Um, there's two panel saddles and all that. I started out with a single panel saddle, nothing wrong with it. I found for me, I wanted to play with a two panel and I found one I really like. This is one from Overreach Outdoors. Again, we'll go over that later, but what I like about it is I can wear it as a single paddle and kind of panel and kind of lean. I can actually open up the lower panel real quickly here. Uh, and then I can just kind of slide it down and it supports underneath me and, and I've got infinite adjustment however I want. In that saddle, you've got a bridge system. They're all different, but they're all the same kind of in a way, if that makes any sense. you got linesman loops. Uh, you're going to have to have a uh, linesman rope, which I have mine daisy chained over here, basically. This is going to help me in, in uh, climbing. Uh, you're going to want to need some, uh, you're going to want some accessories, possibly some dump pouches. This is just a cheap one off of Amazon. Actually, I love it. And I'll talk about that again in another video. A pull-up rope. This one here is actually a Doyle's. It's the flat strap kind. I've had it forever and a day before I even knew what saddle hunting was and just put it in an Eastern Woods uh, fleece pouch. What I like about it, it's self-retractable. It doesn't make any noise. It's just, it's nice and clean. A uh, tether rope system, uh, tether ropes to tether rope. There's different sizes I've found. I like the smaller diameter one. It's just what I like. I believe it's eight millimeter. Uh, the other popular size is 11 meter, millimeter. You can use Prusix, you can use uh, mechanical um, assist. I like the, uh, the Kong duck. Uh, it works very well on the eight millimeter. So that's what I'm using. Um, and then uh, you're gonna basically have to have a way to hang your bow and your gear. Um, I honestly love the tethered uh, gear hanger. I like it. I've seen the others, I haven't used them, but I've got no complaints with the tethered. I just like its versatility. You have to have some type of bow hook. Um, this is a jawbone bow hook. I can no affiliation. I saw them on Facebook. I'm like, that's pretty cool. So I bought it. And uh, I keep a bunch of these uh, plastic S beaners here uh, for hanging stuff. So in this situation, I bring a quiver out with me today, but I would come up here and I would clip this on and then I've got a loop on my quiver and I can actually hang it there. And I use that for a variety of things uh, on this tail end of my um, hanger here a lot of times. 
uh, my camera equipment, my camera bag will hang down here off of an S Beaner of some sort. Again, there's different sizes and ratings and all that, but they're relatively inexpensive and you can't have enough of them. I keep four or five of them on my camera bag uh, and with me at all times. Oh, and then finally, I like to wear knee pads. Now, knee pads are something that a lot of guys can take or leave. Personally, I like them because when I get in a situation where I want to kind of let some slack into my, uh, in my tether rope and I want to kind of sit down and get comfortable, for me, I can put those knees right into the tree like this, and the knee pads really help quite a bit. Also, I find that the knee pads can help kind of in the maneuvering as you're trying to go around the tree. Maybe you're trying to, to wedge yourself in a, re, in a proper position or whatever. Uh, as a guy who's uh, 52, I like to get into different positions while I'm hunting. I might sit for 20, 30 minutes. I may be like, you know what, I'm gonna stand up for, and lean for a while, so I'll you know, bring it in. Sit here and like this, some of this rope, if you get too much rope, you can, <clears throat> you can wind it up. Uh, if you want to, one of the things I often do is I take my rope and I'll run it down through my linesman belt loop like that and it just kind of stays out of the way. <clears throat> but again, uh, you know, being able to go to different positions, you know, stand up more vertically. I mean, it's just for me is, is uh, uh, very versatile and very comfortable to hunt like this. So let's talk shooting positions and the maneuverability. This is where hunting out of a saddle shines. Um, this is what everybody will sell you on, and I'm here to tell you it's it's the real deal. So again, you got your bow hanger or your bow hanging right here at a nice convenient position. And you know, ideally you're wanting that shot. Me, I'm a right-handed shooter, so I'm wanting that shot somewhere out in here, if at all possible. Because I have to do nothing. I literally can pick the bow up, anchor on, and right here you know all this shooting like there's from in this whole window out through here there's no movement for me whatsoever but here's where the beauty of the saddle comes in now i've got something that comes in from behind me and rather than twisting myself all around to kind of get over here or whatever the beauty of the saddle is with this bridge is it rolls around and now i can sit here and i've got access to all of this right here behind me, and this is nothing. It's so comfortable to shoot. It's just absolutely nothing to get into this position right here. So then how do you handle the weak side stuff? And there's a lot of videos on different ideas that you can do this. I mean, there's the old crossing over the bridge. If you want to cross over the bridge and do this, I don't like that. Nothing about this is comfortable to me. Um, would I do it if I had to? Yeah, I, I could. But then you get in this situation where you're going over here and it just doesn't feel right. You'll get some guys that will recommend taking this tether across your body like this, and it does hold you in. And then you've got all of this to shoot. And that's not bad at all. And if you have the time to get into that position, that's probably a really good option. Me as a self filmer though, it never works for me because I've got a camera arm and gear and all that. So I've been trying to avoid this and honestly I've never been caught in this situation where I've had to do it this way. But it's very secure, very maneuverable. I would take this over going over that bridge any day if I wasn't filming. So how do I get to this part? Well, on really about any size tree, I like to set my platform and my sticks at roughly the same elevation, maybe my platform two, three inches higher as it is right now. And what I can do with that is I can actually step on top of that stick and I can work my way around this tree and put that knee, these knees into that tree. And now I can come clear around and I can shoot everything that was in that weak side and it's not comfortable at all. And if I even want to go further, I can actually get on that stick and I can keep coming around the tree. And you'll notice I'm not at all restricted at all in anything. <clears throat> so I literally have 360 degrees of rotation in getting around the tree and you can see how easy it is. I'm doing all this hands-free. I mean, literally I'm walking around the tree completely hands-free, never touching it, and getting in position to shoot anywhere. I mean, this is not 
a young man's only game. If I can do this, you can do it as well. You can see at no point, I've now gone 360 degrees and I've at no point touched the tree with my hands to help myself. It's just using the tether system, the harness or the uh, saddle system, the placement of my platform and my sticks. So again, I just really kind of want to go over the 101 of this, especially for uh, those who feel like they're intimidated. Whether you're, whether you're over 50 or you're 20, 25 years old, doesn't matter. This can be an intimidating thing. And I'm here to tell you there's nothing intimidating about it. One of the cool parts about the saddle hunting game is there's a ton of options and gear options out there. So it becomes very overwhelming. What I would encourage you to do is do your research on what brands or what styles you think you want and just jump in and buy it. The, the equipment is holding its value. So you can either find somebody selling used stuff, jump into it at a lower price point because a little bit of that, you know, going from new to used, uh, value has come off of it. Jump in the game, hunt it. If you don't like it, sell it. Sell the pieces that you don't like and try something else. And you're not going to be out any money or very little. Or just go in and buy whatever. Buy an all tethered setup or an all latitude setup or all uh, cruiser setup or whatever you want. And figure it out what you like and don't like. Sell the items you don't. You're going to recoup most of your money and, and uh, find what you do like. I mean, me, I've thrown together. I started all tethered. And there's nothing wrong with tethered and, and hawk sticks. And I found out what I liked and didn't like. And it wasn't that I hated that stuff. It's just I found that there were things that I liked better. So I sold the stuff, bought the other stuff. And now I'm into a system that I really like. Is it perfect? No. Am I probably going to change some things next year? Who knows? Right now, I absolutely love the setup I've got. So my last tip, guys, is to come up with a system. Okay, you get your stuff. You got to get to the tree and you got to go do A, B, C, D, E in order. And when you get down, you got to go E, D, C, B, A in order. You have got to come up with a system and don't rush it. Do it. You're going to stay safe. You're going to enjoy it. Again, this has opened up uh, my hunting potential. I mean, for me, it's reinvigorated me as a deer hunter and I enjoy deer hunting now a lot more than I was uh, a couple years ago. So get out there. Don't be afraid. And, uh, you know, have fun and stay safe. As always, God bless, stay safe, and it's a new day in the outdoors.